Welcome to Zetun Tuts Plus channel on YouTube. In this two and a half hour video, we will learn all about Photoshop. On the screen resolution so you might be EA seeing a slightly different configuration. By default if your panel layout is different you can choose essential from the workspace speaker. And then choose to reset essential so that we are all starting in the same place. Now to see a list of all of the panel saw that are available in Photoshop we can use. The window menu and we can see for example that the color panel has checked mark. Next to it and it is at the top of its screw over a on the right hand side here if I were to choose. Swatch and seats then the swatch a panel will pop to the top. Of that panel group if I choose to show a additional panels such as the character. Panel Photoshop will automatically add it to the second column we can see that some of the panels. Like the character panels are automatically rested that are automatically nested with other panels. In this case the paragraph panels now panels can have three different views the expanded views. Like we're seeing over here on the right and if I a close this we have the icon views the third views. You can get to by just dragging the icon view a little bit to the left now. The third view you can get to it. By just dragging the icon view a little a bit to the left and now you can get. The icon with the level both the icon and the icon with levels. Have these little gravel handles so if I wanted to reposition or change the stacking order here. I could just drag the history panel down below the character and paragraph would. Right let's drag back to icon view and I will expand the entire column by clicking on the. Two checkpoints here now if you want to rearrange a panel within a group we can just drag the tab. And when we see the group that we want to nesta it with highlighted enchant we can release our. Cursor we can also create our own grouping so if I want to put the swatch in its own group. I will just drag the tag until I see the singly a horizontal chain line and then release the cursor. We can also add additional columns if we want Toa by just dragging to the left of the column until. We see that solid line and releasing the cursor a we can also float panels by just dragging them. Out of any of the column that they are in and these can be very convenient because I can drag this. To a secondary monitor if needed in order to a close a panel I can just click on the X end. Choose to close an individual panel or I can right a click or control click on the group of panels and close the entire group at once if I want to Hidea the panel as well as the tools I can tap the tab. Here now even though they are hidden if I position on my cursor to the side of the monitor they will go. Ahead and pop up so that I could access them and when I position my cursor away from the panels. Photoshop will automatically hide them I can tap the tab key again to bring that back.
If I just want to hide the panel's boot I'll leave the tools and the option showing. Then I'll add the shift key to the deck and Toa bring them back is shift tab now one panel that. I want to point out is the properties panel it's a, a rather special panel because it's going to change. It's content based on what I'm doing and what a tool I'm working with so for example right now. I'm on a background layer so it shows me a lot of the properties of that layer as soon as I Change the background into a layer by clicking GA on the lock icon now I get different options. And if I were to say the type tool and create a, a type layer or the shape tool and create. A shape layer the properties panel is going GA to update to reflect the different options. For those tools right so in order to reset the panels I'll return to the workspace picker and Choose reset Accenture so that we are all BEA working with the same setup so as you can see It's very easy to customize the panela that you use most often in Photoshop as you become more experienced in Photoshop you will find that you will use different group of panels for performing different tasks and Eda may be helpful to customize the panel location and set them specifically for that task so if you want to explore different options Photoshop ships with different watch space or kind of presets of different panel location for example if I was going to be using the painting tools I might want to select that sets of panel to display or if I was doing more graphic design I might choose a graphic and web for now I'll return to essential but personally I find that heavy panels on the left side of my screen is actually far more efficient because it's closer to the toolsa and the menus and the option in the option bar. So what I would typically do is I'll grab the a panel that I use most often say for example the Layers panel and I will dock that over to the a toolbar I also use the path panel quite often. So I will go ahead and dock that right above via the layer panels and I use channels as well. So I'll add that to path the properties panela is very important to me so I'll drag that. But I'm actually going to add it to the bottom of the layers manner and that way when I do something. Like add an adjustment layer my cursor will be right there over the property. So I can start making changes alright I'm also going to add libraries to my path and channels. I'll go ahead and right click or control click and to close my adjustment and I'll close this entire. Text group as well and finally just drag the history to drop it with my layers panel. Now I'm back now I will make sure that the players panel is on top and I will double. Click to collapse this top group of layers making got it rather small so now I have primarily my path. Channels and libraries layer and history and properties as soon as you get these. Set up the way you want them use the workspace a picture here to create a new workspace. 
I'll just call it JK panels on right and you can capture not only where your panels are but also any custom keyboard shortcuts or menus or Thea toolbar setting but for now I'll just leave it. As is and click save now let's select a essential from the workspace speaker. But you can see that nothing happens my panella are still on left hand side and that's because. It remember the last day that the groupa of panels was in so if we want to reset it. I'll just choose reset essential if I ever wanted to delete a workspace you want to make sure that. Workspace that you want to select is not the active one and then you could choose to delete. A workspace for now I'm going to leave this CETA to essential but from now on throughout the course. I'm going I'm actually going to be hiding Minya of the panels that we are not using so that we can focus on the ones that are more relevant to the pictures that we are discussing so as you can. See Photoshop make it very easy to customize and a switch between the different workspace in between. Different panel layout depending on the tool that you are using and the tasks that you are trying to accomplish in addition to using different panels so you will also spend a lot of time in Photoshop. Just fishing between different tools and now almost every tool has a shortcut. For example the Move 2 has a shortcut of V and a Marker 2 has a shortcut of the M key so if I tap. The M key I get the Marker 2 if I tap the VA key again to Move 2 now if you don't know the. Keyboard shortcut for up to you can hover your cursor on top of it and by default it will show. A tool tip however in a previous video I actually uh, turned off the two tips by going to the preference. And then tools and then disabling show two tips uh, and I'm going to leave that off for now the tools. That have the listed triangle in the lower right of that tells me that tool has nested tools with it. So you can click and hold on any of those and and not only that it show you the keyboard shortcut. It also shows you those other nested tools so if I a select the polygonal lasso tool and then attach M. To select the macro tool when I tap L again it is a going to select the topmost tool that is visible. On the toolbar if I want to cycle through a la of the other tools I can hold down the shift key. And then tap L we can see it cycle through a la of the different lasso if you don't like the. Default order of the two or if you want quite a some of the tools that you don't often use you. Can customize the toolbar either by choosing Ga Edit Toolbar or by clicking on the more icons. The three dots here and then choosing Ga Edit Toolbar here you can choose to split. Up nested tools so if you want Bota the move tool and the artboard tool. To have their own place on toolbar you could just a drag this down you could also rearrange too so. I could put the lasso tool with my record Tulsa if I want to if I didn't want to see a tool.
I could drag that to over into the extra tools and a don't worry if you put a tool in the extra tool. You still can access it they are just all found under this small icon so you could just click and Hold there and you still could access those tools if you want to change a keyboard shortcut for two. Say for example the elliptical make with Tulsa I could select it and then type whatever key I want to use for that shortcut just be aware that the shortcut might also be used by some. Of the other tools so if you want to delete it you walk and just select it and then tap the delete key you. Can also choose to disable the shortcut for Anya hidden toolbar extra for example if I have put. Something like the gradient to an extra and I wanted to disable the G so that as I use the shift end. Then type G to cycle through those two I'll just enable that there now typically people show the. Tools that they use most often but as you learn a more and more keyboard shortcut for the tools. You might actually only want to show the tools so that you don't know the keyboard shortcut for. Regardless you can save different presets or a settings of tools by just clicking save preset. And can also load present if you want to create different combinations of tools. For different tasks that you are doing for right and now I'm actually going to restore the default. Because I want to make sure that in case Samia one skip this movie we're going we're looking. At the same thing alright let's click done and a three more litter shortcuts by default the tools. Are in this single column but you can change theta to a double column by just clicking on the two. Checkpoints there you can also flop your a tool by just clicking on the grabber handle. And then just dragging them this can be a convenient if you want to put them on a second. Monitor for now I'll go ahead and dock them back to the side of the monitor. And put it back to the single column rawa and finally if a tool isn't behaving like. You think it should you can always control click on Mac or right click on the tool item in the. Toolbar and reset the tool and that will reset ALA of the option for that tool in the option bar so. As you can see the way the tools are set up and how you access them is very flexible in Photoshop. Don't worry about learning all the shortcuts to all the tools right away you will learn. The one that you need and soon enough it will be a circulation to just use your keyboard shortcut. To select your tools much more quickly and efficiently in Photoshop should cut a great way to increase your productivity when you notice that you are selecting the same command over and over. Throughout the day now when I select one of the module items we can see the keyboard shortcut for. Many of these items although they don't all have via them but for example to create a new document it. Will be command in or Mac or control in on Windows saw the icon right here is going to be the option. Key on Mac or the alternative key on Windows saw and then we have the shortcut for the shift key. Which is this arrow now because not every ya command or every tool has a keyboard short time.
we can assign custom keyboard shortcut in a Photoshop and one of the action that I do. All the time when I have multiple document output is I switch between arranging them so then I could see them all by tiling them and then going back to a seeing just one of them by consolidating all two. Types so the way that you create a custom keyboard a shortcut in Photoshop is either by selecting the Keyboard shortcut option here under the Edita menu or under the Window menu under Workspace. And then Keyboard shortcut and Maneuvers just to know that when you add it depending on which one. Of those you use you are either going to see the menus on top or the keyboard shortcut on top. And I want to change a keyboard shortcut ILLA select that and then you can change the shortcut. For the application manual but also for the panel modules so that would be the fly out menu. On the panels also for the tools and in fact there is a few more options here. Then what you get when you are editing your a toolbar and also your task space so those. Will be spaces like when you are in slime and masca or content away the filter studio ok so for now. We will return to application menu and then IA will scroll down to the window menu and scroll. Down until I see that option to a tile my image then to add a shortcut. I'll just click on the right of that in Thesa empty area here and actually type in the shortcut. So in this case I want it to be command shift and a then T for tile now Photoshop modes mean that the Keyboard shortcut is already in use in EDA and it's actually going to remove it from edit. Transform again if I accept it but since uh, I use this every day and I rarely use edit. Transform again I'm going to go ahead and accept it that then I'll click to the right of way it says. Consolidate all to text and I'm going to use a command shift R for that keyboard shortcut. Again I'm okay with removing it from filter lens a correction because I use this so much more often. So I will choose accept all right let's go and a change a shortcut for our tool and we see many. Of the ones that we saw when we were editing Thea toolbar but as we get down to the very bottom. Area here you will notice that there are a number of additional options that we couldn't change. When we were editing the toolbar and I'm just a going to move down until I see the foreground. Color picker I'm going to click to the right of that and I'm going to tap the NK because The N key is only keyboard shortcut in Photoshop that's not induced by default so now when I tap The end key it's going to bring up the foreground a color picker if I want to save this I could click On the save icon here but for now I'll just click on OK and when I choose the window menu and then. Arrange you can see that Photoshop has added a tools keyboard shortcut to top and consolidate. To tab so if I were to choose file new then just to open up a new document at the default Photoshop. Size if I use Command Shift T Photoshop will it tell those two document and if I use Command Shift R it will return to the active documenta and if I tap the end key to Photoshop will bring 
Up the color picker for me so although creating GA custom keyboard shortcut might seems like a minor thing when you are first starting to learn Photoshop as you become more advanced. You're definitely going to want to access a your tool and your new items more quickly. And customizing your shortcut is only of the most productive ways to do that. There are a variety of file formats that you will need to familiarize yourself with when you are working with image in Photoshop to simplify I'm going to divide them into three areas of the workflow I'm going to divide them into three areas of the workflow the original source or capture file formats then the working formats or the master file formats which will most Likely be like your multi-layered retouched and a composited image in Photoshop and then the output. Format created to output your work for specific devices so we will start with the capture formats. When you start with a photograph the most common off file formats are Jetpack and RAW so Japan is. Currently the most widely used file format INA Photography because it's the default file format. That mobile devices such as phones capture ENDA is almost always an option on a digital camera. Its popularity is based primarily on the fact that Jetpack files are really small. So you can store a large number of photos on a, a single device or a card and they can be written to those devices very quickly however in order to decrease a photograph file. Size the JPEG file formats throw away information a through a process called lossy compression. So the quality of a jetpack can range greatly depending on how much of that information is thrown away unfortunately on some devices like a mobile phones we don't often have a lot of control. Over the amount of compressions that SA applied to those image when the highest quality setting or the least amount of compression ah is applied it usually are noticeable to the eye. In most circumstances but these files have a significantly less flexibility when making. Adjustments such as brightening shadows or a darkening highlights in the image after capture. So when given the option I would choose Nota to capture in a low C compression format. Digest back but in a raw format instead so row ISA a generic term for a file format traditionally. Used to describe images that are captured by a, a digital camera and more recently my mobile devices. And the primary difference between Jetpack and a RAW files is that the RAW file format contain all of the data that the sensor captured so profile is still apply compression to files but they do so. Using a different type of lossless compression so a the quality of the image isn't compromised this. Gives raw files much more flexibility when making GA edits and enhancement to the image after capture. Because there is much more information to work with now most camera manufacturers have their own. Proprietary raw file formats and because the are all written differently this extension. And file formats will be different so for example Nikon's raw file are .nf files and Canon use. .crw and Sony use .arw but they still fall under the generic blanket term obeying raw files.
The DNG format the digital negative is another ROA file format but it has a significant difference. It's not a proprietary file format as so the DNG format was created by Adobe with the intent of DNG becoming the archival format for all digital images. So so Adobe make its file specification saw available to other software developers and Not only do several camera manufacturer capture a differently into the DNG format it's now also Available in several mobile devices in addition to any raw file from any camera manufacturer can be Converted to the DNG file format using Lightroom or Camera Roll or the free Adobe DNG converter. So the next group of file formats are used to save what I would prefer to as you're working. Or your master for and they are used primarily when you are saving your multi-layered documents. From Photoshop and they include PSD and Thifa and the Adobe Cloud Document format so both PSD. And TIFF files save all of Photoshop features such as layers and mask and type shape layers a. Smart object path and much much more and they both use lostness compression to decrease the file size. But because it's lostness the quality of the image isn't compromised so my personal preference is to Save my working files these PSTA files but really ah that's only because Thief wasn't as robust of a File format when I started working in Photoshop a today really the biggest difference is just that a TIFF file can save a larger file up to 4 GB whereas PSD files can only save up to 2 gigs. Now that Adobe Cloud document that's a special a format designed to help transfer files across devices so for example between Photoshop on Thea desktop and Photoshop on iPad and when you save a Document as a cloud document that file is saved in a Adobe Cloud and those files have special features. Such as the ability to save only those portion of a file that have been edited making it much. More efficient to share them between devices over the cloud all right the last group of file format. Are used when it comes time to output or to share a your file maybe to be printed or to be displayed. On a specific devices now in most instances you would want to save a copy of your image. Properly resize and optimize for that specific a device to reduce file size this output file format. Often flatten and compress image and theta makes it easier to upload or transfer. File more quickly in addition if you export a or you save a copy that allows you to return. to your working file or to that master file if you want need to to make changes to your individual layers. At a later time in addition if you export or a you save a copy that will allow you to return. To your working file or to your master file IFA you need to make changes to individual layers. At a later time so if you are preparing your image to be printed it's probably best to ask. What format the lab or the service provider of prefers I mean ideally they would request. Flatten teeth or PSD file in order to maintain the highest quality possible but often it's much. Faster and therefore much more desirable to upload or transfer and print JPEG files so. If you are sending JPEG to be printed just make you sure that the quality setting remains high now. If you are saving file to view on a screen such as a phone or a computer or you are posting images. 
Online JPEG once again is the most common format of because of its ability to create those small files. That download quickly but there are a bunch of a specialty format that I need to at least mention. PNG or PNG is a popular file format to save via graphics for the web when the graphic requires a single layer or a flat thin file but still need to a display transparent areas for example a ping file. Would be an ideal solution for displaying like a, a round logo or button with brown edges that require. Those transparent edge areas because the Penga format will render the smooth edges around that. Transparency so like I say this file format ISA most commonly used for graphic like a logo or more. Flat looking artwork not necessarily a photograph and now the G file format is also a single layer. A flattened file format it has lossy compression ah applied but in a different way than a Japan so too. Save a GIF file you have to convert your image to a different color mode called index color. Which only allow 256 colors because of theta this file format is also commonly used for. Graphics like logos or more flat looking artwork uh, although the GIF file does support transparency. It only supports one level which means if you DOA not which means if you do have the succulent logo. The edges are going to look jagged because GIF have the unique ability to contain an animation. Within the file today they are most often used for a creating ads banner and other short animation to be viewed on screen Photoshop also supports a several popular video and audio file format such as MOV or .264AIFF and MP3 for work in GA with video and audio within Photoshop timeline. The Photoshop PDF form format is very convenient when you need to distribute a secure document. For example you might need to send a client a set of image or a mock-up for a design. Of an unannounced project which is really ah important that no one else can see or open. So as you save a Photoshop PDF the setting enables you to password protect the file from being open. Or from being printed all right that wraps up this overview of the most important. File format that you run across while you area working with Photoshop and why you choose one. Over another we are going to take the next few minutes to look at the most popular color modes. In Photoshop and the role that beat that plays a in their ability to store information so bit dab. Specify how much information is available for each a pixel in an image the more bits of information. Per pixel the more values are possible and the more accurate tonal representation can be achieved. So in this example we see an image that only has a, a bit depth of one it can only display two possible. Value black or white so as a result one big image and not very common when working with photograph. Now if we increase the bit depth to 8 then our image can contain 256 possible toner or color values there are three a common types of file that are all considered to be 8b but they have very important difference based on the value that they contain and the number of Channels and the number of channels so the first would be a grayscale mode image. 
An 8-bit grayscale image can have 256 possible a value and it's limited to one single channel now. In most instant 256 shades of grey can represent a an adequate number of tonal levels to display what appears to be a continuous tone black and white or I guess more accurately a grayscale photograph. Now the second mode is index color it's similar to the grayscale mode in that it can contain 256 possible values but in this case those values are colors not shades of gray index colors image. Are primarily used when the file size need to be a very small so for example when creating X banner. Or other image to post online like grayscale modia index color is also limited to a single channel. And this helps keep the file size down but in Mista instance index color mode is unable to display. A large enough spectrum of colors to render a continuous tone photograph. Now to try to appear continuous tone the 256A colors can be customized they can be customized. based on the colors in the image or they can be a map to specific color palettes and it use this detailing or the artery of two or more color saw to help simulate the additional kind of in between colors but as you can see in the enlarge it a preview here the index color is prone to bending Especially in softer areas of gradation and EDA really doesn't hold up well when it's enlarged. Or if additional editing ISA required the third color mode is RGB. So similar to the grayscale and the index color modes an 8-bit RGB image can have 256 possible. Values the key difference is that the RGB image have three channels to store this information. Red, green and blue whereas the previous colorum modes were limited to one single channel so with 256 possible values in each channel RGB image so can have over 16 million possible colors and can in most instance represent a continuous tonia color portograph however 8b RGB images obviously don't represent all of the tonal levels or thea colors in the world there are certain values that can't be represented at all which can result in an inaccurate representation of A scene so to help solve this problem we can work a with both 16-bit grayscale and 16-bit RGB images. Assisting with per pixel grayscale image a can contain over 65000 shades of gray. That's a lot more than just the 256 value that were possible in the 8-bit grayscale and a 16-bit per pixel RGB image will have via over 65000 possible values for each channel so literally trillions of colors to work with but 16-bit actually exceed both our ability to perceive colors as well as the number of reproducible colors so if the additional bit that is beyond our ability to perceive thea colors and if system bit increase the size of the file then why do we want to work with 16 bit it sa because they have the potential for maintaining a higher quality image and with withstanding a greater manipulation in post processing so if we look at this original image and we look at the histogram which is something we will be talking about more in depth in later videos we can see that the histogram is nice and smooth. 
but if I'm working with an 8-bit file and I needed to make big changes for example I need to lighten up the image then when I make those image changes I'm going to get these gaps in the histogram and these gaps represent areas where there are no color values and if the gap get too large then the quality of the image is going to decrease and we will most likely see bending in areas of our image If on the other hand I'm working with a 16-bit image I have more latitude. When I'm making two same errors and we are EA not going to see those gaps in the histogram. Now it is important to note that Photoshop also supports 32-bit images these images are sometimes referred to as high dynamic range image but the shouldn't be confused with a popular high dynamic. Range imaging or HDR technique that photographer are used to blend multiple exposures of the same scene into a single raw file using camera raw or using Ga Lightroom those files actually have a maximum bit depth of 16 bit instead industries such ASA film and gaming use true 32 32 bit images when they are rendering 32 when they are rendering a 3D object and when they are creating computer. Generated imagery for special effects so 32 bit of file can get very large very fast and since not. All of Photoshop features are available in 32 bit a and because most output devices don't support 32 b These images are typically converted to a 16B or 8B at some point in the workflow. In a perfect world all of our devices are printer saw and our monitors and our screen and our phones. They would all be able to display or print all of the colors that the human eyes can see but they can't in fact not only does each device's display a subset of colors different devices display. Different subsets of colors but to put it another way if we think a device as being able to. Represent certain number of crayons then different devices not only have different numbers of players. So some will be small and only have 10 crayons saw while others may be larger and have 20 crayons. And they also are going to have different colored crayons so one might have one blue one another. Color space has five different has five completely a different blues so there's many reasons that. Different devices represent colors different lia tag screens for example a screen use and additive. Process to represent color where adding equal of parts of bright green and blue light produce. White wall printing technology use a subspect via process to represent colors where adding together. Chain magenta yellow and black and crest black uh, another reason for this difference is that not all. Screen nor all printing technology area created equally so some manufacturers use. Different materials have different quality a saw to meet the needs of their different consumer. So keep in mind that different devices display a different colors we need to figure out how many colors we need to work with when creating and uh, editing our images in Photoshop so that they will contain the colors that we want to show across all of the devices that we are operating to and to do.
so we are going to look at four different Colora space in Photoshop sRGB RB RGB Pro Photo and CMYK. Now imagine that the color shape the horse show Isa there represent all of the colors visible to. The human eye of course it's not but conceptually ah it's going to give us an idea of the relationship. Between the four color spaces so the triangle within that shape represents the sRGB color space. So it's a relatively small color space in a comparison to the color gamut of the human. I but most screen can display all of the color saw in the sRGB color space so it might be a great. Color space to mean if you know that you are only going to be publishing to the screen however sRGB. isn't typically the best color spacia for editing image because most image captured by digital cameras contain formal color saw that are in the RSRGB color space therefore. If you convert to and work in sRGB most likely you are going to be discarding most likely you. are going to be discarding a significant number of colors in the image and with fewer colors. Then we are not going to have the latitude TOA make large color and toner edits to the fall. Without negatively impacting the quality of the image so that takes us to the second color space. The Adobe RGB color space is a larger color spacia than sRGB and most high quality computer monitors. Can display all of the colors in Adobe RGB it's the most popular color space. Because of the latitude it has when making edit saw an almost entire Adobe RGB color gamut can be. Printed by inkjet printer especially tools with a 6 or more color length especially those with 6. Or more color inks the only drawback to work in GA in a larger color space such as Adobe RGB is that. When we do convert image to sRGB to publish on a screen to your mobile device for example there. Might be some shift in colors as cut as the image is reduced down into that smaller color space now. When we look at Pro Photo, we can see that it is a even larger than the Adobe RGB color space, and many people, especially photographers, work in a for especially photographers work in Pro Photo. to take advantage of that higher quality Colora information when they are processing their file. However because the color space is so large there are times when you might not be able to accurately see all of the colors in the image on your screen which may then lead to surprise such as color shape and bendings when you convert them down into the smaller color space. When we look at the CMYK color space we can see that the color space used to output file to a conventional printing press is really a quite limited now in the past some designer work. In the CMYK color space because the work was only going to be output to a printing press. But today this is less popular because so much of the content that we create is really purpose for both free as well as on screen so let's take you a look at how we would set our color setting in. Photoshop first I'll choose the edit menu and Thena select color setting we can see that we can see. That the default for our working space is actually a sRGB now if you are a photographer then you might. 
want to choose Pro Photo or you might want Toa Select Adobe RGB if you are designing for screen. Then you may want to remain in sRGB you really need to choose the color space that makes the most. Sense for your workflow or you can leave it as EDA is because in the color management policy below. You can see that Photoshop is going got to preserve the embedded profiles. Which means that if you open a file in a Photoshop that's in another color space. It's going to remain in that color space yeah it's going to remain in that color space. So for example files from Lightroom will open a into Photoshop in the Pro Photo color space. In the Pro Photo color space unless a you have changed the default setting. If you are starting in bridge and you edit through a camera roll then you need to set the color space. Under the workflow settings so for now I'm a going to change my working space to Adobe RGB. I'll leave the color management profile as they are and click OK so there you go. An overview of four of the most common color space in Photoshop. In Photoshop it's always good to know how your image is going to be displayed because If you know this then you will know the dimension saw of the document that you need to work with. So in this video we are going to discuss the four most common ways to display an image on. A screen half tone printing inject printing and a continuous tone and we are going to learn how. To calculate the correct document size needed for each type of output so first let's discuss. Let's discuss the dimensions of a document that will be displayed on a screen such as a monitor or a phone what's most important in this scenario ISA the width and height of the document in pixel not. In resolution so all screen have a specific number of pixels so your document needs to have enough pixels to fill the portion of the screen where the image is going to be displayed. The resolution of the file really doesn't matter because the device is going to map a single boxer in the document to a single pixel on the screen for example when I post image to my blog. If I want them to be the same width as the body of the text which is 600 pixel wide. For example when I post images to my blog IFA I want them to be the same width as a body of. The text which is 600 pixel wide Thena I would need to create a document with. A width of 600 pixels to have the image to be a the same width as the text it wouldn't matter. What the resolution of the file is as long as a the width was 600 pixel now with that said I. Want to point out that today many applications saw that display image on screen use technology. That detects the screen size of the device thena the contain being view on and change the layout. And the size of the image that are downloaded on the fly so this technology is transferred to end. To as responsive design and it's really powerful because it's allowed us to upload a single. Image size for the largest screen that we think is going to be viewed on end then. For the largest screen that we think is going got to be it's going to be viewed on and then. The software is going to take care of a downloading the appropriate size image. When the viewer click on that page but still you need to know that the largest pixel count for the. 
largest screen that you are going to display your image now what about half pawn printing? The most common example is going to be Thea printing press although the image might start off as a continuous tone like a photograph for example in order to be printed to most. Conventional printing prints the documents needed to be converted into a half tone pattern now. The half tone pattern is made up of dots with a unique pattern for each of the chain magenta yellow and black inca and when the dot patterns are printed. One on top of another decorate the illusion of a continuous tone but it's not in fact a continuous. Torn image if you look at anything that's being got printed like a poster or box of cereals especially. If you look at it underneath a magnifying glass you are going to see that these individual dogs. So in Photoshop in addition to knowing the width and height of the document that you are going to be printing you need to know the resolution or how many pixels per inch of pixel. You need to know the resolution or how many pixels per inch or pixel per centimeter or Whatever your unit or measurement is you need to print the quality that you want and the quality that you want is going to depend on the linear screen that you are going to be printing to. So on press the line screen is heavily dependent on the quality of the ink and the paper and this is due to impart what's called dot gang so when a you print on a lower quality pepper the ink tends. To spread when it hits that pepper and the dots tend to blend into one another if we look at a newspaper as an example because of the coarseness of that paper you complete with a really high line screen because the dot game Mac ISA difficult to hold the details you might be. Limited for example to an 85 line screen for a lower quality paper whereas if you are printing to a higher end paper for a high quality finia art book or something you might be able to print or something or something you might be able to print as high as 300 line screen. So it's a general rule of thumb you need a one and a half to two times the line screen. Call the be it pixel per inch or PPI so for a example if you are going to print to a hundred. Line screen you are going to need between 150A and 200 bucks so per inch so with that in mind. So with that in mind when you preparing when a you are preparing documents to be printed. To the printing press it's really important to, to work with your printer because together. You and your printer are going to decide on the lion screen base on the ink and the paper. And then from there you can decide whether a you want one and a half or two times the line. Screen in order to achieve the quality that you are looking for OK next will be inject printing. So injured printing so inject printers also print dots on paper but if you look at the print under a minifying glass you are not going to see any half tone patterns and this is because an Inject printer varies the placement of very very small dots of ink on vapor so an inject printer. 
typically need a resolution between 240 and 360 APPI depending on the desirable quality of the brain I would recommend that you print the Samia image at 240, 300 and 360 PPI I find that most people can see the difference between 240 and 300A but fewer people can see the difference between 303 and 3N But fewer people can see the difference of between 303 and 260. Of course the viewing distance is also going to make a difference ifa the viewer is an arm distance away from the image. Then you may need to print as a high R resolution then if you are going to view the brain from across the room so what about a continuous tone printing printing to morph. Printing to photographic paper would be EA an example of continuous tone printing. If you are a photographer you might be EA sending image to a lab to help them pray. You might be sending image to a lab to have them printed for example. In this case you simply need to ask the lab what resolution they want the file. You simply need to ask the lab what resolution they want the file. As they will know the optimal resolution needed for their printers. It's been my personal experience that they typically want something around 300 pixel per inch. So in summary if you are creating image for screen you need to know the total pixel column for the area of the device that you are displaying your image on for the printing press your documents is going to need to be one and half to two times so the line screen will be in resolution which is PPI for inject printer you will most likely use a or resolution between 300 and 360 PPI and 4 Continuous tone printing is really based to us to a select what resolution they recommend in the next video we'll see how to change the document size in a Photoshop for a specific display and output device. In order to change the size of a document for a specific output device we will use Photoshop image. Size command I'll choose image and then image a size or we could use the keyboard shortcut command. Option I on Mac or control alternative I on Windows on the left hand side we have a Preview area and we can click and drag in a order to view different areas of the image. And on the right hand side we have ALA of our image dimensions we can also expand this if we want to see our preview area a little bit larger or we can also preview this in the image area but if you are going got to do this for the most accurate viewing. You will want to zoom into 100 or I'll use a command 1 or Mac or control 1 on Windows. For the most accurate viewing you will want it to zoom into 100% so I'll use. Command I on Mac or control I on Windows. For the most accurate of viewing you want to be zoomed in 200 so I'll use command 1A on Mac or control 1 on Windows. Now we can see that the original image size here is a little over 24 max and the width.
now we can see that the original image size here is a little over 24 mag and the weave. High and resolution are 12 by 8 by 300 pixel para inch now as I start making changes there are two. Different ways that I can do this I can either choose to resample my image or I can toggle this. Off if I turn off resampling and then I make it changes to the width high and the resolution. We can change the print size of the image but we're not actually reassembling we're not adding. Or subtracting pixel will adjust just determining how many of them we want Photoshop to put in a. specific unit of measurements so for example IFA I decided that I want to change the way from 12 to 80 well Photoshop isn't going to have X many pixels per inch we can see the resolution drops to 200 if I only need to print this 6 inch Thena Photoshop can add more pixel closer together And my resolution move all the way up to a 600 if I toggle on the resampling option. Now I'm allowing Photoshop to either discard a or make up information it's a change to weave. High in resolution so for example if we take Thesa back up to 18 inch and I want to print it at 300. Pixels per inch now Photoshop is going to make UPA information taking what was that 200 taking what? Was that 24.7 Mac file up to a 55.6 Mac file IFA we ever want to see how much of what percentage? Photoshop has to resize the image we can click and change these 2%. So now I know that Photoshop has to make you up a half a pixel for every original pixel. That was in the document if you want to control how the image is resembled you can. See you can select from a number of different resembling options if you choose automatic it's. Going to select the preserved details when it essay enlarging or adding pixel to default document. And it's going to select but and it's going to select BQB. Shopper if it has to reduce or discard a information from the document the nice thing is. that you can leave it set to automatic and a Photoshop will automatically select the option for you if you want to try out any of the audio option ah, please feel free I like the preserved details it's a tech preview and it detects and preserves a detail and texture and image without over Sharpening prominent edges or smoothing out the lower contrast details I think it's worked really. Well with harder age details like text and logosis so let's take a look at how I'll set up image size. For three specific output device if I need to resize this for a specific screen then I will. Change the unit of measurements to pixel and adjust enter in the number of pixels that I need. Or if I was going through the printing a press then I'll change this back to the units of measurement that I want to use and a let's say I was going to a 150 line screen. So I multiply that by 1.5 and that it would be 2 to 5 pixels per inch. And that would be 225 pixel per inch now let's decrease the inch down to 18 inch. And we could see that Photoshop will need to add or increase this 1012.5.
percent. And we could see that Thea Photoshop and we could see that. Photoshop would need to add or increase these. 112.5% in order to print with those IA dimensions now the third example will be either. The inject example where I'm printing at 300A pixels per inch or let's say I was sending. This to a lab to bring continuous tonia and they requested 300 pixels per inch. Well then I would just change this to 300 pia and let's say I want to print it out at 6 inch. And let's say I want to print it out at a 6 inch by 4 inch now we can see that. Photoshop will need to decrease the file size of for now I'll click OK and we can see that. Photoshop makes the file smaller I'll use a command 0 in order to fit on screen and then. I would most likely want to save a copy of this file at the new site so that if I ever. Need to return to the original document I will still have that full resolution file. But for now I'll go ahead and just close it without saving so there you have it. You can use image size in Photoshop to resize the photograph or your image for your specific output. Device deciding whether or not you want to add a or remove information using the resample option. One of the most important features in Photoshop is the ability to undo whatever you just did. Because just knowing that nothing that you are do is permanent allow you to experiment. And play in Photoshop for example if I choose to select the image menu. For example if I choose to select the image menu and then image rotation. For example if I choose to select the image menu and then image rotation and then flip the canvas. Horizontally I can always choose to undo this I A could select edit and then undo or I could use. The keyboard shortcut command Z or Mac or Trilla Z on Windows or I can show my history panels. Now if you are using now if your history panella isn't showing use the window menu and choose. History and you can see that whatever I do in a Photoshop is going to be added to this list so. To go back in time I'll just click the previous ID now by default the history panel is going to. Keep track of the last 50 command that you DOA if you want to keep it if you want it to keep. Track of more or less you can always change you there in preference under performance now. Let's build up some history by making some edits saw to this image I'll start with the filter menu. And choose stylize and then choose solarize Thena I'll go to the image menu and choose adjustment. And then we will invert this then I'll return it to the filters again to stylize and choose. I'll pan filter and I'll just apply it with the default setting then I'll return again to image. And adjustment and hue and saturations ILLA go ahead and click on colorize to bring it. All to the same hue and then make one more edita which is under image and auto tone now in order. To go back multiple step we can use the history a panel the any module or the keyboard shortcut. If I select the edit menu I can undo what I did last and then continue undoing back. Through time or I can use the keyboard a shortcut to either undo or redo in this case. It would just be adding the shift a key so it will be command shift z. So it will be command shift Z or we can use the history panel and just click on whatever. 
state we want to return to just now just to know that if you go back in time and history. History is linear so the states below your are currently selected states the one that you. The one that agreed out if you did something right and now those steps would disappear now at any time. You can also revert the file we can DOA that by either closing the image without saving any changes and then reopening EDA or we could choose file and then reverb. Or at the top of the history a panel Photoshop creates a snapshot. When you originally open the document so you a could click on that in order to revert it. So you can click on that to revert it only thing to know is when you do close the file. The history is going to be discarded so Thea next time you open the file you wouldn't have. Access to it the history is going to start fresh uh, alright let's go ahead and close this image. I'm not going to save any changes and in future uh, videos we will discover additional ways to work. Non-destructively with those filter and Thea adjustment but as you can see the ability to Go back in time using multiple undo or the history a panel is a huge advantage it enables you to work In a much more flexible environment where you shouldn't hesitate to try something new As we walk through the exercise INA this training course we need to learn how to save our image to maintain flexibility especially when we start working with players. So the first thing that I'm going to do ISA select the Photoshop menu and then preference. And under file handling I want to change the maximize PSE and PSP file compatibility. To always although this preference increase a file size is going to allow me to work with. And view image faster and more easily across other applications including Lightroom and Bridge OK. Now let's make a quick change to our image I'm a going to add what's called a gradient fill layer. By choosing layer and then new fill layer and a then gradient I will change the blend color mode. I'll change the blend mode to color and Thena click OK now both adjustment layers and blend. Modes are going to be covered in more detail later in the course but what's more important now. Detail later in the course but what is a important now is that we are creating a multi-layered document I'm going to a click on the downward pointing arrow here. And I'm going to select one of the blue gradient presets in order to overlay it on top of my event. In order to overlay it on top of my image Thena I'll click OK to dismiss the dialog so let's say. We are finished and I want to save the file I will a choose file and then save as I'm going to save it. Locally on my computer and save it as either a Photoshop or as a T file to ensure that all of. My changes including layers or Mars or type will be saved in the most flexible manner now to keep. Image management to a minimum I'm going to rename the image using a very simple naming convention. I typically will add an underscore and then me for a master edit to indicate that this is the file that I have edited in Photoshop I'm going to save EDA to the same folder including layers and click Save now let's make another edits I'll doubly click on the icon in the gradient fill layer In the layers panel and I'll select a, a different gradient this time I select from one. 
of the different green preset scrolling down and then selecting a different preset until I find one that I like I'll tap enter to dismiss that ILLA also change to the I'll also change the angle moving it to 180 degrees then I'll click OK and in order to save this in another file I'll Choose file and then save as again I'm going to a click don't show again and save it locally on my Computer if I ever change my mind and I want to a save it to the cloud I could click here to save The cloud document now when I have made a change you like this I want to just append the file again But I probability but I probably don't want Toa put final or finish or done instead I'm going To put an underscore zero one then as I continue Toa make changes I can just add to that sequence Again I'll save it as a Photoshop file with the layers and click save now if I want to Save another copy say for example to post to my blog then I wouldn't use CSS because that would Require me to resize the image and change the color mode of this document before saving it Instead I'm just going to go to the file menu and choose to export as And choose to export as in the export dialog I can choose from the list of file formats in this case I'll keep it To jetpack I can change the quality in this case yeah, I'll keep it to jetpack I can change the quality That would be the corporation amount but I'm a going to leave it to 100 and if I needed to Resize the file down to say 800 pixel and I could do so here in the image size area if I needed to Add some canvas size or some padding around it I could and I could choose to include my copyright And contact information as well as convert it to a sRGB and embed that color profile then I'll export The document navigate to the exercise filia and save it in the same folder as that jetpack The advantage here is that I didn't have Toa convert the document that I was working on So if I want con so if I want to continue working ga I could just move forward from here but since We have already saved this I'll go ahead and choose file and then close without saving and we'll navigate to bridge where we can see our original document the first edit that we made The certain edit and the exported jetpack so before we wrap up I typically save my edited PSD And key file back to the same folder as original however there may be times where you are to save All of your edited files into a separate folder it really just depends on the project but I'll return To Photoshop and then go to preference and select a file handling where I could uncheck the option to Save us to the original folder in which case I know which case Photoshop will continuously save to the In which case Photoshop would continuously save the last folder that you set to so for now I'll keep that on and click OK but there you go An easy way to save or export a your edited files in Photoshop There are a variety of reasons that you might want to crop your image in Photoshop In this case I need to stack several neutral density filters on my lens in order to slow the shutter speed to get the long exposure off of the water so let's take a look at the crop tool But before we do I just want to point out that we are working on a background right now because we 
are going to take a look at some option where Theta automatically turns words it into a layer but for. Now our type C for the crop tool you will notice here that Photoshop automatically adds a crop marquees. Around the entire image but when you first select a the crop tool you can just click and drag anywhere. In your image in order to drag out your own marker then you can use any of the handles in order to. Resize it by simply dragging in the center by default the crop is unconstrained but once you. Have dragged out the crop you can hold down the shift key in order to constrain it as you drag. If you want to crop to a specific aspect ratio you can select from the different presets here. Or enter in your own values if you ever wanted to swap the width and height just click on the double headed arrows to remove the aspect ratio constraint just click clear by default the crop. Tool is showing an overlay in this case it's the rule of turn but we can change that by clicking. On the overlay icon and selecting from the lista or we can cycle through the overlay using the O. Key I prefer to only see the overlay as I'm actually dragging the crop so I change from. The always show overlay to the auto show overlay now on mouse down I can see that who have turns but. When I release the cursor it will hide let's go ahead and turn it to always show overlay again. And then tap the O key and you can see that I'm cycling through the different grid overlay. If I hold down the shift O then it change ya is going to change if I hold down the shift. K and O then it's going to change the orientation of the overlay alright I'll tap all again to. Return to the rule of Thursday by default we can see the background area behind the crop tool. If we want to change the opacity or disable theta we can select the gear icon and then uncheck. Show crop area or change the opacity by you just a using the slider here I'll go ahead and set back. I'll go ahead and set that back to 75 and Thena whenever you have a drop down below like this. You can tap enter in order to close the window now when you are starting with a background layer by. Default Photoshop is going to delete all of Thea pixels that are outside of the crop mark here and. If we look at our layers panel because we started a with a background layer when you add the crop. Photoshop is going to show you this crop preview here and if we apply the crop by clicking on the. Check mark Photoshop will return to Thea's background status and is actually removed. And is actually remove all of the pixel area outside of the canvas area so in fact if I. Swap the move tool by tapping the V key and we unlock the background by clicking on the lock. Icon and then we reposition the image we can see that all of that information has been cropped off. Alright I'm going to revert the file by clicking on the snapshot. At the top of the history panel if the history panel is not showing you can display it by. Using the window menu or you could revert the file by selecting file and then reverb. And revert alright I'll tap the C key again to select the crop tool and this. Time I'm going to uncheck the delete crop pixel and now as I drag out my crop Photoshop is going to automatically convert the background and we see a very different crop preview in the layers panel. Let's go ahead and just reposition this and now when I tap return or enter or click on the check mark to apply that crop we now have a layer instead of the background if I select the move tool and I reposition the image you can see that a Photoshop was keeping track of all of the pixels. That we were that were beyond the canvas area and now because we are working with a layer file and. Because Photoshop is holding onto that additional information our file size will be larger than if. We would chosen if we choose to delete the Cropa pixel and if you save as a PSD file or TIFF file. Photoshop is going to hang on to all those EA pixels that are outside of the clock area. That are outside of the clock however if you save it as a JPEG or any other format it doesn't support. Layers you are going to lose those pixels if you ever want Photoshop to increase the canvas area. If you ever want Photoshop to increase the combo size to include any pixels that. 
have been cropped you can choose image and Thena review all and finally if you do drag out a crop. And then apply that crop and then you want to crop up again you'll notice that the handles are removable. Errant visible you just need to click on anywhere in the image area and then. Photoshop will display the crop marquee you can make your adjustment and then apply your crop. So there you have it the crop to make it easier than ever to remove distracting elements. While preserving crop information offer flexible image editing. There are several ways that you can straighten an image in Photoshop. The first is to select the crop tool. So tap the C key and Thena select the structure tool in option bar. Now we just need to drag either a horizontal or vertical line in the image and release the mouse in order to straighten it. You'll notice that the stretching tool is constrained to within the original canvas. So by default, a no extra transparent area would add it. Although you can always resize the crop marquee IFA necessary to temporarily access the Stratton tool. While you are in the crop tool just hold down the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows. And then drag with the Stricten tool now the second method is also with the crop tool all we need to do is all we need to do is reposition our cursor outside of the crop and then click and drag. To rotate which you will notice also constrain the crop to retain the original canvas size. Alright let's go ahead and cancel that by either a tapping the escape key or clicking on the cancel. Icon and the third method is to use the ruler tool which is nested underneath the eyedropper tool. Now the ruler tool can give you two different results depending on how we use it but let's just. Click and drag out our line which is actually a dragging out a measurement and we can see that. Measurement in the option bar now in order to have via Photoshop straighten these we can click on certain. Layers and that's an important distinction because if you are working with a multi-layer document. You can limit the rotation to a single layer uh, alright let's write out another measurement. Because the second way you can use the measurement I ruler because the second way you can use the measurement ruler tool is by choosing image yeah, and then image rotation and then arbitrary. Photoshop will automatically insert the angle of the measurement you can choose. Between clockwise and counterclockwise and uh, when I click OK Photoshop in this case it's Going to create it's going to rotate the entire canvas it's also convert the background into a layer and you can see that it's extended the cover size to incorporate the entire photograph. By adding transparency along the edges so there you have it three ways to straighten. A tilt image or a tube layer using the Cropa straighten and ruler tools in Photoshop. One of the assumptions that's made when we use the image size command to resize a document is that you want to use the entire image and that the file is already at the correct aspect ratio but okay but I often want to use only a portion of the image change the aspect ratio and define the width high and resolution of the document the crop tool is going to enable us to do this in one step so first let's just look at image size I choose image yeah, and then image size if I want to print this image at 4x5 and 300 pixel per inch when I change the width to 5 well the height changed to 3.333. So it's not a 5x4 if I change the height to 4 well and now I have got a width of 6. So that's because. These files are the 2x3 aspect ratio nota at a 4x5 aspect ratio so we are never. Going to success so we are never going to succeed in the image size dialog box unless we unlink this. But then that would distort the image so let SA cancel out of here and I'll tap the C key to. Select the crop tool and then we could enter in an aspect ratio in this case 4x5 and I will. Want to swap that by clicking on the double heady da arrows I can reposition it and then tap enter or. Return to apply that crop now we could move to the image and then image size dialog and I can enter. In my 5 inches for my wave and we get the 4 inches for the high because it's at the correct aspect. 
ratio but the crop 2 can actually do this in ONI step so in the history panel I'm going to click. On the snapshot that was created when I opened Thea file to reverb back to the original then in the crop tool I'm going to select from the drop down a menu one of the presets the 4x5 and 300 pixels per inch again I'll tap the double headed arrows are reposition the crop in the image area and this time when I tap into return to apply the crop of Photoshop will not only crop to that aspect ratio it's also going to resize the image and in fact you can see down in the status bar that is a 1500 pixel by 1200 pixel which is going to a b4 by 5 at 300 pixels per inch so the benefit to this method is that you are able to crop to the correct aspect ratio and resize it one step but the drawback is that you are not able to see all of the information in the image size dialog box so you don't necessarily know how much information was in the original file and whether or not Photoshop had to resample the image up or down still as you become more advanced this can be added still as you become me more advanced this can be an excellent way to save time when you are preparing your image for output alright let's revert the file again by clicking on the snapshot in the history panel I want to try a different example here let's say I want to crop the image for the screen so in pixel I'm going to go ahead and clear the Previous crop setting and I want to crop this to a 1600 so I'll tap in 1600 and then enter pixel. So I'll type a 1600 and then enter px4 a pixel I'll tap the tape key to move to the next. Entry and type in 700 px and then and type in 700a pixels and then hit tab again and type in 72 now. We can resize and reposition the crop and when I apply this I know that that will be the correct size to use as the picture image on my blog now because I want to crop to this size over and over. Again from the drop down menu I'll choose a Nawa crop preset Photoshop will automatically name it for me with the correct dimension and click OK and now whenever I want to crop to that specific size I can just select it from the drop down menu here in the crop tool now I just want to show you one other way then I often see people cropping the image when they are simply one to use a portion of the image without resampling the documenta I'll apply the crop and then use the history panel to revert the image and I'll tap the MK to select market the market to then for the size then for the style I'll change it from a normal to a fixed size now I can type in any dimension let's use that 1600 by 700a pixels again and then click in the image area. So we can see that when I was using the crop tool of Photoshop actually had to crop and resize the image but if I didn't want Photoshop to resize the image this area here within the market to market. Within the market 2 is the exact dimension the 1600 pixel by 700 pixels so now I could choose image and then crop and Photoshop will crop to that exact size I'll go ahead and use select. And then this line and then let's go ahead and right click or control click on the Mac. And reset the tool so there you go several methods saw to quickly crop to the perfect size in Photoshop. One of the lesser known features when using GA the crop tool is its ability to add additional converse area around the image so before we start I'll tap the C key but then I'm going to right click and reset the tool then I'm going to top of the escape key because I want to click and drag in the image area in order to drag out the crop and now if we start by just scraping the crop handles. We could crop beyond the image area but when you walk click and drag within the image area by default. You are actually constrained to only crop within the image so all we need to do is release the cursor and now we can go ahead and crop outside of the image in order to add some cover size however. If we look at the layer panel we will start and go with a background layer so if I were to click the check to apply the crop right now it would actually fill that area with the background color. So it's actually filled with white I don't want to do that so I'll use the snapshot in. 
the street panel to revert the image and thesa time before using the crop tool I'm going to. Convert the background into a layer by clicking GA on the lock icon so now that we have a layer. If I click in the image area with the Kropa tool and I hold down the option key on the Mac or the odd on the alternate key on Windows IA can actually crop out in both directions equally. We can see the checkable area here that SA representing transparency and if I apply this. Instead of filling that area with white it SA going to fill it with transparency because. We were on a layer instead of a background now if I want now if I need the cover size to be a specific size we will go ahead and revert the filia again and then convert the background into a layer. By clicking the icon by clicking the lock icona and then choose image and then canvas size I'll change my unit of measurement to inches and we can enter in specific values here I can click relative. And just enter in say 2 inches for the wave and a 3 inches for the high now when I add 2 inches here. Is because Photoshop is going to add 1 inch on either side and I'm adding 3 inches so I'll have a little bit more room at the bottom and we can click in the anchor area to anchor this say. To the top left or to the right but in this area I'm going to keep it centered but in this case. I'm going to keep it centered and when I click OK Photoshop will have added that canvas size. I'm going to use Command-0 to fit on screen top of V key tap the V key to switch to the Move tool. And we can see how easy it is to reposition on the photograph in the keyboard area because we're working with a layer it makes it very easy for us to change the background color. Right now it turns better but if I choose Layer A and then Now and then New Fill Layer and Solid Color I'll use the default setting and then you see the color picker in order to select the color. And click OK but of course that fills the entire canvas with that color so I need to reposition. The layer in the layers tag by just dragging the color fill layer under layer 0 or the photograph. The best thing about of color field layer ISA I can always double click on the color swatch. In the layers when that will bring up the color picker and it makes it very easy for me to change. The color of the background so in order to add a converse to an image in a more free form manner. You can try dragging beyond the image size using GA the crop tool just remember to turn the background. Into a layer first or for more specific size a option be sure to use the converse size command. One of the problem that can arise when a straightening and when straightening an image. Using the crop tool is that by default the Kropa tool shrink the marquee to fit inside the document. And we might want to make and we might want to make use of the maximum number of pixels that we have in original files so let SA select the crop tool by tapping the C key and I'm going to right click to reset the tool on that that would be a control click. If you don't have a two button mousey then I'll just position my cursor outside of the crop marquee and click and drag in order and drag in order to rotate it to straighten. And I'm just using the windows of that from Housea for reference but we can see that by default it has constrained the crop to retain the original a canvas so let's go ahead and just drag to drag. And make this a bit larger now I'm incorporating ga all of the original pixel from the photograph. But if I apply to the crop now then I'm just going ga to end up with a field area here so instead I'm going to enable content away and then apply the crop and when I apply the content away technology Photoshop is going to automatically fill in any of those transparent areas with computer generated content aware information so it might not always do a perfect job and we might need to go in and do a little bit of retouching ga but when you have an organic background such as the sky area here or all of the sea grass in the foreground in Photoshop and all of these grass in the foreground of Photoshop is going to get us probably 85 to 95 of the way there then we could just go in and select something like our spot healing brush tool and if we see any areas where there's repeating patterns we might just 
want to brush over those areas this is also very a this is also using content aware technology so photoshop will make up or generate information ought to fill in those areas so again we might just want to paint to remove some of these to remove via some of those repeating patterns i'll be talking more about retouching tools in later chapters buddha the next time you need to change the crop of your image and fill in those extended area be sure to try the content away option within the crop tool Photoshop ability to work with player saw is definitely one of my favorite features. So let's take a look at how we can master the layers panel in order. To easily work with multiple images in a single document let's start by creating a new document. And I'm going to set the width and height to a pixel and I'm going to change it to 2600 by 1624. I want the resolution to be 300A pixels per inch RGB color 8 bit. And I'll put the background content to white and then click create. I'll select both the graphs as well as the green layers and then just use the keyboard shortcut. Command or on Mac or Control or, or Windows to open those two images so we can see now that I have. Three documents open I have my untight Lita document my graphs as well as the greens. I can click on any of the tapes to view them but I can also use control tape. In order to cycle through them at any point in time but I want to see. All three of the image at one time so I L L A choose windows and then arrange and then tar. Now if you have been following along with the course we set up a custom keyboard shortcut. Command Shift T so we could use that as well and now that I can see all of my different image. I can click with the move tool on any one of these image to make it the target document. And if you watch it in the layers panel we get a preview of the content of that image. So with the greens layer targeted I'm going to drag the background from the layers panel and drop it onto my untitled document if I hold the shift a key as I drag and drop then Photoshop will drop it. Right in the center of the document Thena I can click the greens file to target it. And then use the X in order to close it Thena I'll click on the graphs document and again. From the layers panel I'll drag the background a and drop it into the untitled document. Holding down the shift key to center the layer a, I'll close the graphs layer and now we can see. Our multi-layered document the untitled layer a that has layer 2 and layer 1. I want to rename. These layers so I'm going to double click on the name and I'll just call these scripts. And then tap enter to apply that again I'll doubly click on layer 1 and rename it greens tap enter to. Apply that if you didn't hold down the shift a key it's really not a problem if your image. Aren't centered because you can always target a the layer in the layers panel and with the move. Tool selected we could reposition them I wanted to point out there's a difference between. Targeting a layer and hiding and showing the layer or toggling the visibility of the layer if I click. The eye icon that will toggle the visibility but I actually need to click on the layer if I. 
want to target it if I hide the visibility for a all of the layers we can see the checkerboard. That's going to represent transparency in your Photoshop document alright let's toggle back. On the visibility of the background and also target it so the background layer is unique. There are three things you can't do you can ta change the stacking order in that I can drag it. Up in the layer panel nor can I reposition it so with the move tool selected if I click and drag. Photoshop isn't going to reposition the image yet. in fact it has auto select on and it deselect. The background layer so I need to target that a background again and the third thing you can. Do as you can't erase to transparency when you are on a background so if I tap the E key to Select the eraser tool or if I select it from the toolbar and if I start to erase well my Background color is white so we wouldn't really uh, see visually any difference but if I switch this So that the background color is black and I try to, to erase it look like I'm painting with black. Because I'm erasing to that background color so I'll undo that using command that on Mac or Control. Z on Windows so in order to change the background into a layer the easiest way is to just click on. The lock icon in the layers panel now I can go ahead and switch to the move tool and I could. Reposition the background layer again I'll undo that using Command Z or Mac or Control Z on Windows. I can change the stacking order so I could a reposition it above the green so that it would actually hide that green layer or I can move it back below the green layer and if I tap the E key again to select the eraser now when I erase we're actually going to see transparency. Below this layer we're not going to be erasing toa the background color so again I'll use command Z. Or control Z to undo that alright let's target the graphs layer and also make it visible. Now I want the graphs layer to only appear in the top portion of the image so I'm going to use. The view menu in order to show my ruler saw and then I can drag out a guide but. It will probably be helpful if I right click Aura on my you can control click and set the guides. 2% that will make it very easy for me to a drag from the ruler area down into the image area. And it will snap at 50% and I know that a because I'm looking at the ruler on the left side. Or you can see with the heads up display that a Y equals 50% then I'll tap the V key. To select the move tool and with that graph so layer targeted I can go ahead and reposition it. In the image area and ILLA reposition it right to about there. Now if I only want it to appear in the upper left in the upper half of my image I need to get. Rid of this area so the first way we will remove a content on a layer is by using the marquee tool. And then dragging a monkey around the area that we want to debate and simply tapping the delay key. Now this is a prominent change so I have actually gotten rid of that information. So let's try this again on another layer and see if we can do it in a more non-destructive manner. I'll use the select menu and then deselect the monkey selection then I'll hide this layer for a moment I'll make the green layer visible and ILLA also targeted in the layers panel this time I'm going to select the frame tool from the toolbar and I'm going to make sure that it's set to the first icon here we should drag out a rectangle I'm then going to start in the upper left hand corner and drag out a frame around the area that I wanted to keep in this case the top 50 of the document. 
Photoshop will automatically create a frame and IFA we look in the layer panels I now have two icons. I have the icon for the frame that I can select a or I have the icon for the image if I click on. The frame which would highlight it and we can see that it adds these transformation handles. Then I can click and drag any of those handles to a change the size of the frame I'll use command Z. Or control Z on the window to undo that if I click on inside the frame area then I can reposition the photograph or the content of the layer within theta frame and if I double click here inside the image. Now we can see on the layer panel that Bota the frame and the image are targeted so now. If I reposition it I'm repositioning the frame and the content of that frame as well all right I'll. Use command Z to undo that then on the layer saw panel I'm going to target the content of the. Layer and then just reposition that a bit now out of this point we have done enough work on the image. That I would want to save it so from the Filia menu I'll choose save I'll rename it harvest. Making sure that I save it as a Photoshop or ASA active file and I'll save that into the 006 layers. Folder with the layers and click save now if I scroll back to bridge we can see all. Of the original exercise file as well as our Nawa harvest.psd as you get more comfortable working. With players there are a few shortcuts that area going to help us become much more efficient I. Want to open up the peppers the pumpkins the strawberries and automotives and add them to. Our composite document but instead of just using GA command or or control or on windows to open them each. In their own document I'm going to use the Tula menu select Photoshop and then load this file into. Photoshop layers then tell Bridge to hand off each a one of those photographs and put it into a single. Document now it didn't add it to the harvested document because it's not sure if we want that it. Cracked a new document and we can see on the layer of panel we have all four of those layers all right. Let's style the two upper documents we can do that using the custom keyboard shortcut. That we assign or we can just use window and Thena arrange and then tile now when you drag and drop. Files between documents you can always go in and a change the stating order but it might be useful. To just make a note as to which layer you area on before you drag and drop them so I'm going. To just target the harvest file for a moment and a we can see that I have the green layer targeted. If I have layer 0 targeted for example and a I drag and drop them this file will be added. Right above the currently targeted layer so IFA I want to add them at the top of the layers tag. I'll actually click on the graphs layer and Thena return to untitled one I'm going to select all of. The layers right now the papers layer is targeted but if I hold down the shift key I can then click. On the tomato layer and select them all at one C then from the layers panel I'll just drag and drop. Again holding down the shift key in order to drop them right into the center of the harvest document. I no longer need this untitled document so I lla just go ahead and close it without saving it. You can see in the layers panel all four OFA these layers appear above the graphs layer. One of the things that's nice about using the load file into layer script is that we can see. On the layers panel Photoshop automatically name each one of the layers the name of the document if. We want to change the stacking order all we need to do is drag and drop in order to change them.
Of course we can only see the peppers layer of because it's on the top but I do want to put the strawberry on the bottom and then we will have the pumpkins and then the peppers and then the tomato layer now to quickly select layers we can use the layers panel obviously to click on any of these layers and we can click on the command a key on Mac or the control key of Windows to select Multiple layers you can also use the move tool to a quickly select position layers in document area. So if I tap V to select the move tool we can see that the auto select layer is on so if I click over the greens area it automatically select a layers in the layers panel if I click on tomatoes. It's selected so you can see how I could quickly reposition all of these different individual image. With the auto select layers enabled as your document get more complicated though you might. Want to disable this so I'll go ahead and turn EDA off but there is a shortcut that will temporarily. Enable it and that's the command key so right and now even though I have my cursor reposition. Over the tomato layer it's going to move the strawberry layer because that's what targeted in the layers panel but if I hold down the command a key and then click on a layer with a move tool. It will automatically select that layer so and now I can reposition it one final way to select layers that I find very convenient is Toa either use the control key and click with Mac or Right click wherever you click in the image area a Photoshop will display a context sensitive menu. Distinct all of the layer underneath the area that you click so now I can quickly select strawberries. Or if we come over here I have the option to select the peppers the pumpkins or layer 0. In this case I will select the pumpkin saw in order to arrange these four smaller image. I want to create a new guide layout it might be EA easiest if I control plus click on Mac or right. Click in the ruler area and change the values from a percent to pixel and that will just help when I go. To view and then choose new guide layout because all of the values here would be set to pixel. So all I want is a simple margin I don't need a, a margin at the top or bottom but I'm going to Enter in 300 pixel on the left as well as right and then click OK and we can see that Photoshop Has added that margin all right I want to move the strawberry to the left so I will hold down The command key in order to select it and Thena release the command key and just drag it over then I want to do the same thing command plus a click on the tomatoes and move it over to the right and you can see as I reposition these layers saw Photoshop is showing me the smart guides help me. Align and dispute each of the image are commanded plus click on the papers and drag them over to the left and then command plus click on the pumpkin saw and just drag them down so the smart guides are. Very convenient especially when you have got a, a number for those that are all the same size. So it can help me align top and bottom and also dispute them but I want to point out theirs. Another way to dispute your layers in the layer saw panel I'm going to select all four of the layers. I'll click on tomato and then hold down the shift a key to select the strawberry and then with the Move tool selected we have a number of different options to align as well as distribute our layers. So first I'll align them all so they are all topa and line and then I'll click the more icon and. I want to evenly distribute them based on their centers now this work perfectly when all of the. 
Image that you are disbuilting are the same size of but if they were different size and I want to make. Sure that I put even spacing between them Thena I will choose the distribute spacing option if I. Click it now it's not going to do anything because they have already been distributed and the spacing. Even because they are all the same size all right uh, I'll tap enter dismiss the window and then I'll. Choose the view menu and then I'll choose extras uh, and because it's got the check mark now when. I select this it's going to uncheck it and our guides will be hidden all right let's do a quick. File and then surface I'm going to append Thesa as harvest underscore all one and save it to the. All six layers as a Photoshop document which will keep all of my layers and click save then I return. To bridge and we can see our new hardware SA underscore one PSD file as you work with more and. More layers one of the things that happen it is that your layers manner might get a bit out of control so in order to organize your layer so you can use layers group not only do layers group help organize your layers you can also use them to move all of your layers at one time or scale them or change opacity or blend mode even add a spatial effects by adding layers effects to groups. So I'm going to start in the layers panel by selecting all four of this small image. I've got the strawberry targeted I'm going to hold it down the shift key and click on tomato then to. Create a layer group I can choose layer and Thena group layers or I can use the keyboard shortcut. Command G on Mac or Control G or Windows or from Thea layers panel we can just drag these layers onto. The folder icon and that will create a new group of the group is collapsed by default and you can use the disclosure triangle to see the content of the group I'll go ahead and rename the group. Two small photos and then tap enter to apply that so I know it might seems like a bit overkill. And it might take a little more time to make you sure that the layers are all named but if you are. Working in a collaborative environment and if you are going to hand off your file to another artist. Or to a production team or even if it's just a you that has to revisit your file letter to. Make changes it's ready to advantage to keep a track on and name all of your layers all right. I'm going to take V to select the move tool and I want to make sure that auto select layers is disabled now when I click in the image area because layer group is selected you'll notice that all of the layers move together as only another way that you can move layers is simply by using the arrow key to nudge them up or down or a side to side and if you hold down the shift key it will move them in larger increments ok it's time to add the logo to the layers so I'm going to return to bridge and then doubly click to open the logo.psd this document contain. Two layers and while one of them look like text is actually a shape layer I just created a text. Layer and in converted it to a shape layer in case you didn't have the same phones installed as I did. So with these two layers selected on the layer saw panel I'm going to use that keyboard shortcut. Command G on Mac or Control G on Windows in order to create my group and I'll rename these two logo then. In order to add this to my harvest image I can use the custom keyboard shortcut that we created. Or I can just choose Window Arranged and Thenatar now if I click on the Harvest 01 document. I just want to point out that this small photo saw layer group is targeted and if I drag and drop. The logo into this document right now is actually a going place it inside of this group which is fine. 
I could always rearrange the stacking order ladder of but it might be easier to just close the small photos and that way when I click on the logo and we drag and drop it over again holding the shift key so that it drops right in the center we can see on the layers panel instead of Photoshop. Placing the logo group into the small photos Eda press it above it alright let's close the logo.psd. I don't need to save those changes and since the logo layer group is targeted and I have my move. Tool selected it's easy to move all of the layer in the layer group at one time we haven't talked. Much about scaling or transforming layers Buta if I want to make this logo a little bit smaller. With the layer group selected I could choose a edit and then transform and then scale. If I hold down the option key on the Mac or the alternative key on Windows and I drag one of the corner points it will scale from the center and I can go ahead and transform this and make it a bit smaller to apply that transformation I'll click on the check mark in the option bar now if I want. To change the opacity of an individual layer I can target a layer in the layers panel and then click and drag left or right on the word opacity to you see these scrubby sliders or I can enter in a specific values or I can use the drop down menu which will a give me a slider I'll tap enter to close that but if you have the move tool selected I think there is a an easier way if I know that I want this to be 80 I can just tap ETI on the keyboard and that will a change the opacity for that layer if I tap 2. It will change it to 20 if you tap 2 number saw quickly like 4 or 5 it will give you 45. Percent if you tap 00, zero it actually change you the opacity to 0% but if you just tap 0 ones it will set the opacity at 100 if I a want to change the opacity for all of the layers. At once I can target the layer group and Thena tap E to change the opacity of the entire group. To 80% now I think it would look better ifa all of these small images were actually circles. So I'm going to use the disclosure triangle to view the content of the small photons layer group. And I'll start with the strawberry BA targeting it and then selecting the frame tool. This time I want to make sure that I have the second icon selected the circle although when I drag out the frame it's actually going ga to look like it's dragging out a square. But when I release the cursor it will be a circle so I'll start in the upper left of the strawberry. And then just drag it a diagonal down to the lower right and reduce my cursor to create a frame. In this shape of a circle then I'll select the papers layers again just drag out using those. Smart guides to help create the same size shapey then I'll move to the pumpkins layer dragging out. Another frame and once more on the tomato just a one more frame I like the way they look at circles. Because they kind of look like the logo at a this point I'll choose file and then save as. I'm going to append this to be harvesta underscore 002 saving it in that same. 06 layers folder as a Photoshop documenta and click save then I can close this document. When we return to bridge we can see our harvest 0 to underscore psd file as. A document begins to contain more and more layers sometimes those file size will grow to be. Quite large so people are always looking for a way to reduce the file size but unfortunately many of. The different ways that Photoshop has to merge or combine layers also remove some of the flexibility. But we are going to take a look at these different options so that you can decide for yourself. 
If I use the status bar in the lower left we can change this to document size and the first size. The 12 max show us the fractal size and the second DAW size is the layered document so we can see that. There is quite a big difference between 12 and a 17 max so if we want to get the file size down. The first thing we might want to try doing ga is cropping the image because I remember that we had these grapes there here and theta grabs their extent above the visible document area. So I'm going to choose select all and then ILLA choose image and then crop and that will crop away. Any information that falls beyond the Converse C area of course there's a permanent change so if I didn't want to reposition the grapes now I really couldn't because I have crop off. All the other information all right I'll use the select menu to deselect. And the next option we might try ISA to delete any layers that we know. We're not going to be using so at this point I can choose between using the graphs layer or using the greens layer in this case I actually like the greens layer better. So I can select the graphs layer and drag it to the trash icon at the bottom of the layers panel. Or I could just tap the delete key in order to delete it we can see that the file size has been Decreased but of course I lost the flexibility because if I want to switch to the graphs layer. I'll have to open it up and then reposition Eta and everything so I can also try to merge layers. Together and I could definitely merge layers saw together that don't overlap and that wouldn't be. As permanent of a change because I could always select one of the areas and then reposition it. But if I for example want to merge together a four of this small photograph and I choose the Layer menu to select merge layers we can see that and not only do I lose the flexibility of having each One of the photos on an individual layer but I have also permanently applied those frames So the content around each one of this individual image has been deleted so again it might save me. Some file size but it's make a permanent change it to the image so if you want to maintain that. Level of flexibility then I would suggest that you don't merge your layers together so I will. Undo that threatening a file would always be a way to save some space but when I choose layer. And then flatten image well Photoshop is going got to flatten or merge all of the layers together. Including for example the logo on top of the C screen so if I want to change say the opacity. Of the logo again well I will have to bring Eta in and redo it slow flattening layers is quite. Destructive and permanent so I already really doa it I'll go ahead and choose undo flattened image. And then choose file and then close and then close yeah, this without saving the changes so there you have. It to maintain the most flexible workflow I would recommend that you don't merge or flatten your layers just in case you want to make changes to your document in the future for the most amount of flexibility you will want to keep your layer at a Photoshop files but most likely you also need to. Send those files to client or share them with the others in different file format that are smaller. And easier to transfer the best way to do this ISA by exporting them I'm going to use the file menu. And choose export and then export preferences which are going to set up my preference so. That I can then use quick export so in the export of preference the default file format is actually PNG. So I'm going to switch that to Jetpack because I often export as JPEGs for the most amount of flexibility you will want to keep your layer at a Photoshop files but most likely you will also need to send those files to clients or share them with others in different file formats.
that are smaller and easier to transfer and the best way to do this is by exporting them. I'm going to use the form menu and a choose export and then export preference. Which are going to set up my preference so that I can then use quick export so in the export. Preference the default file format is actually Penga so I'm going to switch that to Jetpack because I Often export as Jetpack and I'm going to lower the quality down to 90. I find that there is very little visual difference between 90 and 100A and if I set it to 90 the file size is usually reduced by about error third but of course these are up to you as your preference as far as a quick export location I'm going to export the files TOA and assets folder next to the current document so Photoshop will automatically create a folder and inside of that will be my exported files. I'm going to include my copyright and contact TA information and also convert this to sRGB as 4. The export as location I'm also going to export a access to the location of the current document. So once these are set up I can click away and Thena to quickly export my file I'll use file export and Then click export as JPEG if we return to Bridge we see the new access folder that was created. And if I double click there is my JPEG file so the nice thing about quick export is if we return to Photoshop you can see that I've just exported a, a secondary JPEG file but I still have my fully layered Photoshop document that I can continue working with now if we want. Some additional option when we are exporting we can choose the export menu again but this time. We'll use export s here we can select from a number of different form formats I will stay. With JPEG for right now decreasing that to 90 Buddha we can also do things like change the image size. So if I want to send a smaller image I could just a enter in maybe 1200 pixel here and that would. Resize the image down I could also add canvas size if I wanted to add a border around here I could do. So for now I'll leave that alone but I do want it to include my copyright and contact information. Convert it to sRGB and embed that color profile we get a preview of the image as is going to be. Export it in the preview area and if we needed a multiple copies say we needed one even smaller. Then this then I can click on the plus icon and I can select from a number of different size. Alright for now I'll just click on the Trasha icon there and then choose to export this I'm Going to append the file name with an underscore a 1200 pixels so that I know that I've resized this And then click save alright returning to Photoshop there might be times when you just want to export A portion of your image say individual layer saw or maybe a layer group if that's the case you just need to select either the layer group or the individual layer and then instead of using the file menu choose layer and then export s so here we can see that I'm exporting as separate files. The layer group as well as each of the individual image and I can target any of these. So I'll target the logo and then change the setting for each one of these export. Files individually so this will export as AAPNG file whereas all the rest of them will export as JPG I'll go ahead and include the copyright and contact information. 
Embed the color profile and then click export select that a same folder click OK click open and now we see. Each one of the individual layer has been exported as its own Japan and the logo has been exported. As a PNG file so whenever you need to save ala copies of your document or even layers or layers. Group within those documents to different filea format quick export and export as are an option you. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more tutorials.